Coming up next on Flightline News, we'll take a look at our new full motion simulator and new arrows and new Cessnas. Find out when some new aircraft join the fleet. That and more as Flightline News starts right now. Welcome back to another edition of Flightline News. I'm Bob Thomas. Ember-Riddle has acquired a CRJ200 Level D full motion simulator to help students meet the new ATP minimums. We're the first university in the nation to have a full motion simulator offered to students enrolled in the program. To find out more about the new sim, we meet our new simulation engineer, Robert Heyman, in the Advanced Flight Simulation Center. So this is a flight safety Level D six axis of motion flight simulator. There's six actuators, there's 36 inch actuators. Uh, Mid-level is 18 inches, so it has 18 inches from neutral. We can simulate any condition that the CRJ200 could possibly get into for training our pilots so that they have experience in just about anything that could happen uh, while in flight. So now in the hydraulic pump room for the CRJ, uh, we have a, the HPU, which is hydraulic pump unit that controls all the hydraulics and the motion. On the far side, we have the smallest pump. It's the uh, circulation pump. It keeps the hydraulic fluid flowing and keeps a, uh, an even temperature in the hydraulic fluid, whether it's in use or not. The next pump we have is a control loading pump. Control loading pump gives us our, our pressure and our hydraulics for all our, our flight controls that are inside the uh, the CRJ. Uh, the next, the large pump is the hydraulic motion pump, and we have a second hydraulic motion pump. Uh, first hydraulic motion pump puts out about 1900 psi. The second hydraulic pump uh, gives us 1950 psi. Uh, those control all the motion, uh, the six legs of axis, the movement. Pumps feed from the hydraulic reservoir that holds 300 gallons of hydraulic fluid. The pressure lines go through, they go out through a trough in the, the floor up to the CRJ control motion base, and from there it spreads out through the hydraulic systems that are needed through the hydraulic pump. They all come back and return on the one hydraulic fluid return line here, go back into the hydraulic pump for recirculation. So this is cabinet one of five. Uh, this is our host computational system. It houses the computers that, that manage all the software that runs the CRJ. This handles all the power going out to the trainer and controls all the power going into all the cabinets. And below we have some crown amps that support our sound system. Our next cabinet uh, is one of two cabinets that have our input-output uh, control cards on it. And below we have our sound distribution panel. Uh, it handles all the sounds. There's nine speakers inside the simulator to simulate all the environmental sounds. Our, la our fourth cabinet has two cabinets of uh, input-output cards, controls uh, just all the switches that are in the cockpit. Basically what happens is when the pilot flips the switch, that signal gets routed into this cabinet. It turns the, uh, the digital input or the analog input on sends a signal back out and it activates whatever that system actually uh, controls. And our last cabinet is our, uh, our uh, visual cabinet. We have three projectors on there, projector one, two, and three. Uh, these process all the video, all the terrain, all the weather uh, that's going out to the, the three different projectors that are on the uh, simulator. Once our ATP course is approved by the FAA, students will have an opportunity to fly the new simulator during the CRJ course. Get ready to replace those flight course workbooks. Pre-activity computer exercises, or PACE, are being developed as a new tool to help students study and get prepared for their activities. Hi, I'm Brian Herget, developer of the Pre-activity Computer Exercise Program, or PACE. What is PACE? It's the newest training aid at Embry-Riddle, and it's going to change the way you study. Preparing for a flight training activity traditionally involves reading FAA manuals and maybe some chair flying. Although these references are essential to every activity, they're missing something important, and that's the ability to interface with the information presented. And that's where PACE comes in. There's a PACE unit for each line item in the course, and for each lesson there would be multiple PACE units. 
At the end of a PACE unit is a short quiz, generally five questions long, maybe sometimes ten questions at the largest, and students complete these before each activity. You can find each of the PACE units that's currently available by going to the Flight Department on Blackboard and selecting the link at the left called PACE Units. Keep in mind that PACE units are not standalone preparation materials. You must still complete the required reading assignments in addition to any other specified homework given to you by your flight instructor. Fall break from October 18th through the 21st, there'll be a 10% discount on all flight activities. On Thanksgiving break, save 10% on November 27th, 29th, 30th, and December 1st. And celebrate the end of the fall semester and save 10% from December 12th through the 24th. Remember, the flight line is closed from December 25th through January 1st. Keep in mind that rentals and refresher flights are not included. The discounts apply to the airplane dry rate, FTD rate, and instructor rates, and all discounts are subject to aircraft availability. So make sure to plan ahead and take advantage of this great value. The Aviation Maintenance Science Department is celebrating their newest addition to the AMS fleet, the Gulfstream 3, which flew in on Sunday, September 29th, and was immediately moved onto the AMS ramp. This generous donation will afford all AMS students an amazing opportunity to have hands-on training with this type of jet. And we're going to utilize it to uh, train students in aircraft maintenance on much more modern equipment. This is uh, pretty much equivalent to what you'd find on a commercial uh, airliner as far as systems go. We'll be able to uh, run engines, uh, work with the electrical system. It's got a, a modern air cycle machine type air conditioning system. It's got a hydraulic system like a, a modern airliner in which it uses Skydrol, not 5606, which is going to be a, a quite a difference for uh, students. It's got uh, modern avionics. The aircraft does have uh, EFIS. Uh, it's got a modern auto flight system. It has a flight management system. So for uh, avionics training as well, it's going to be much more up to date than any of the other aircraft that we have in the uh, curriculum. We're very excited about having this uh, new addition to the department. We're very appreciative of the uh, company that donated the aircraft to us. And uh, the airplane is going to be a tremendous asset to the uh, department for uh, the future. The ERAU Industry Career Expo will be held on October 9th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the ICI Center. Right now we've got 83 companies registered and they'll be here recruiting and hiring for full-time opportunities, internship opportunities, and it's a great networking event to come and meet the recruiters and hiring managers. They're going to be recruiting for everything from flight to business to engineering, maintenance, uh, a lot of great opportunities. Um, so grab a lot of resumes, put on your best suit. It is a professional dress event, and come over and join us. Welcome to the Fleet Maintenance Hangar. Glad you could join us today. I just want to cover a couple of quick topics at the start of this semester that we want to bring to you. The first topic is headsets and clipboards. We request that you do not place the headsets and the clipboards on top of the instrument panels because what we're seeing are scratches in the windscreens on the inside. These are extremely difficult to replace and they're going to affect your vision of your flight. The second item we want to talk about is use of battery. While you're doing your pre-flight, please, especially early in the morning and as the temperatures start to cool off some, use your battery sparingly. Don't turn all your avionics on, all your lights on, and walk around the airplane for a long period of time. Use the battery sparingly. Last, last item I'd like to talk about is when you crank your airplane, once you get the engine running, lean your engine out and keep it lean all the way to the, your run-up area prior to takeoff. Thank you for your time, appreciate this very much, and it will enhance in having more aircraft ready for you in the morning. The new fleet is on its way. You may have seen the new Cessna and its new paint scheme on the ramp. So when will the rest of the new airplanes come in? This summer, as early as June, we're planning on getting 22 new Cessnas, replacing 22 of the older Cessnas. And in summer of 2015, we'll get another 20 more. We will transition over to a completely new fleet over the next two years. These Cessnas will be just like 405 Echo Romeo with the new paint scheme and new features including wireless data transfer capability so we can build a debriefing tool for IPs and students in the future. But that's not all. We're also going to get some new Piper Arrows around June of 2014. These Arrows will have the new paint scheme and a G500 glass cockpit display. Piper is going to start the assembly line for us for these aircraft. They haven't been manufactured recently. Not many people have been buying them. Since we're buying five, uh, they are going to start the assembly line for us and 
these are going to be brand new, replace the current ones that we have out there on the line, which have a significant amount of time and even more significant the amount of landings that are on our current fleet of arrows. So we'll be getting five new Piper arrows and we'll be keeping three of our old ones that will actually increase our fleet of Piper arrows by one. The three arrows that we are keeping, we're going to have to convert to the G500 so that they'll match the uh, new ones. Just a reminder that the Industry Advisory Council meet and greet will be held October 15th from 1245 to 2 o'clock in the College of Aviation Atrium. Come speak with industry professionals and enjoy a complimentary lunch. And finally, due to the government shutdown, the testing center located in the College of Aviation will not be able to conduct FAA testing after October 4th until the shutdown is resolved. This will affect not only our testing center, but FAA testing centers around the country. We'll keep you posted on the very latest as this story develops. Next time on Flightline News, we'll let you know how you can take advantage of the Study Abroad program. If you have any comments or our story ideas, please send us an email at specialvfr.erau.edu. Check out our newest Aviation 101 content at erau.coursesites.com. That's it for this edition of Flightline News. I'm Bob Thomas. Thanks for watching.